is a riddle wrapped in a mystery inside an enigma. Hey there, welcome to another Minute Microscopy. I'm Casey Rochford. Why don't you like and share the video and subscribe to the channel. And uh, don't worry, we'll have this done in a minute or two. Um, with, it, with everything going on right now with uh, defunding the police, I thought it would be a great time to talk about uh, the third law of motion. Yeah, well, I'll try to make it make sense. Um, you've, you've heard it probably more colloquially referred to as every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Okay, so um, when people are getting all up in arms about police being defunded and police losing jobs and stuff, um, they're, they're thinking that more police equals less crime. But is that really true? There's some things that we really should be asking ourselves here. Um, do crimes committed by cops get counted in general crime statistics? Well, maybe if they're actually convicted, that's not usually happening. That's a, that's a problem to consider for one thing. I, another one is the, the, the serve and protect thing that, that we've placed upon the shoulders of our police officers. How many times have you actually had a police officer prevent a crime? Like, in the moment. Because, uh, you know, a smash and grab doesn't really imply a lengthy process. Pulling a trigger takes maybe a second or less. really depends on the lack of empathy in the assailant. Uh, these, these are things that, yeah, a police officer could prevent these solely based on chance. They're driving by, they see something happen, jump out of the car, do something about it. Not saying that doesn't happen, but it's not very likely. And we have it built into our society that that's exactly what they're there to do. And by having more of them, we'll have a greater chance of, I mean, basically we're saying, well, if I buy 10 lottery tickets, I'm definitely going to win, right? Nope, that's not how numbers work. So the, the last question that I'm building up to, to here is if you were tasked with like an impossible feat and you felt that you had to break the law to enforce the law to live up to that standard, would you keep going? Would you keep pushing that boulder up that hill toward godhood when you know it's impossible, when you know it can't be done or it can't be done the right way at least? Uh, here's the thing. Yeah, police will lose jobs. They should take the money from all the guns and tear gas first. But yeah, there will have to be cuts. Um, police chiefs making over a quarter million dollars. Um, yeah, knock that down a little. Um, you know, a few jobs are going to go away. Yes, but more jobs will be created in the community. And I bet you anything those displaced officers will probably pick up those positions because those are going to be safer, less violent, and they'll actually be helping people. And here's the thing. You're right. I, I'm right too. Most police officers are pr probably good people. They want to help. It's just, we aren't defined by actions alone, but as a whole, there's a predominance of either doing bad things, while they may be good people, they're doing bad things, or they're turning the other cheek while their colleagues are doing bad things. And they're doing it because, I mean, some of them might be sicko weirdos that take pleasure in that sort of thing. I won't deny that is certainly the case sometimes, but, um, a lot of the times they feel like they have to do it to get the job done. And there's statistics that back that up. So that's all I really wanted to say is that the more we push on crime, especially things that aren't really crime, the more that crime is going to push back. If we handle things with the appropriate amount of force, maybe things will get better.
This has been another Minute Microscopy, or several minutes. Sorry. See you next time.